Yo. I got pink shorts on. What does that mean? This is gonna be a crankbait video. You guys asked a bunch of questions. We put up a pretty, I think, in-depth crankbait video breaking down kind of magnum and deep diving crankbaits. We also did a live stream with Bass Quest, Benjamin Noak, and Alex Rudd really getting into long lining, but you guys had some more questions and I wanted to run through some kind of main topics that we talked about. And as I mentioned, I have pink shorts on. If you guys don't have a pair of these, get one. They're, they're a required essential for summer fishing. But come along with me. We're gonna do some garage talk. Make sure to check out JT's new garage talk series. We're kind of both putting together these kind of cool in-depth bait and technique breakdowns. But we're gonna talk about long lining. And it's a technique that the pros can't use, at least in the top level of tournament fishing, but it is one of the most effective things that you can do for moody, extra deep, or really spread out bass during summer. So let's talk fishing, let's talk crankbaits and long lining. Welcome back to Garage Talk, my fishing fanatic bros and broettes. So we're gonna get to long lining in a second and talk about all the fun things that you can do with a crankbait and expand on our other crankbait video. Make sure to go watch that one where we talk about types, sizes, and colors. But one thing I wanted to do, I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys saying that basically you've been unsubscribed to the channel. And I don't know if YouTube hates the outdoors or what is going on, but I've had a lot of you guys say like, you no longer are subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy real fishing content, tips, techniques, learning to catch more bass on the water content, go down below this video right there. Hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit that thumbs up button. Don't let YouTube decide what you see on YouTube. You pick the kind of content that applies and interests you. Don't let them pick it for you. But let's talk about long lining. What's the basic concept behind it? What you do when you're long lining or what's defined as long lining in general, it's sort of the bass fishing variation on trolling. So you basically find a stretch or a pot of fish or some kind of structure or target that you wanna fish. Oftentimes it's either super elongated or a deeper structure than what your bait normally will reach. And you go before it, you start basically like before your, your point of interest, you flick your bait out there, you open up the spool on your reel, and you use your trolling motor to troll all the way across that structure and past it, and then you turn the boat around, you engage your reel, and you crank that crankbait down there. And basically, when you're long lining like that, there's three things, I think, that are the goals that you're trying to achieve. And we talked about them, we did a live stream the other night um, with Bass Quest, with Ben Nowak and Alex Rudd, if you guys watched it. And we really try to isolate, the, like, what are the goals when you're long lining? And there's three basic things. The first principle and how long lining really got known and sort of famous, if you will, is achieving crazy deep depths with crankbaits that are only supposed to run, say, 12, 15, 16 feet. Like this Berkeley dredger, I think it's rated to run like 15 feet or so, maybe 16, 17, like somewhere in that range, like middle teens or so. But when you long line and let out all of that line, say like 150 feet and crank it in, you can achieve depths with this bait of, I mean, really up to like 25, 28, sometimes even 30 some feet of water, depending on the, the line diameter that you're using or the pound test. So that's the first principle. So you can achieve greater depths than what your bait is rated for. The second reason is, I don't know if you guys have had the experience, but when you're like idling and you're scanning using your graph, you see a bunch of fish on it, say like a, a pot or a school of fish. Well, sometimes those schools aren't just like 20 yards or 15 yards. So it's not just like a chunk of fish. It's like this extensive, I think Alex talked about it in the, in the live stream, he called it a football field of bass. Maybe they're not all stacked up on each other, but there's one, then another five feet, there's another, and it lasts for like 100 feet. It's just this extensive school, or it's an extensive structure that you're looking to cover. And what you can do is, it's almost like, I don't know, you're covering water in a more efficient way, so you're not really trying to achieve like, crazy depths with these crankbaits. You're just trying to put that crankbait in the strike zone for a longer, more extended period of time. The last reason that you long line, and I think this is the little more nuanced and sort of, I don't know, the reason that you use it that's a little more outside the box. One thing that I've learned, especially fishing on the TVA, Lake Gunnersville, probably among the top 10 pressured lakes in the country, I would venture. Lake Chickamauga, where Caleb Basquez lives, just crazy pressure, dude. So really my opinion or my philosophy with bass is when you're on a body of water that, that's extremely pressured, there's really two ways to get fish to bite. And that's with extreme reactions 
or extreme finesse. So what long lining does is really when you're cranking that bait in, you're really imparting just a ton of, I guess it's velocity on that bait. I would say when you're long lining, you move these crankbaits at a faster speed and grind them into the bottom harder than any time or any cast that you could make. So like I can cast this DC20 out and, and crank it down and try to burn it in that, but I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to achieve the speed and the, the real bottom dredging that I get when I'm long lining. And what that does is it presents a bait that maybe fish won't bite when, when you're casting it, but because you're putting so much speed and so much digging sort of triggering motion into it, the fish bite it and they react to it. And it really, for some schools, it's the only way I can actually get them to bite. So I look at it as a technique that if you have a pot of fish where you're throwing your bait, casting it, you're cranking it down and they're not reacting, this is sort of a, a secondary way that you can trigger those fish to bite by presenting a bait faster than they normally see it and, and triggering them in a way that they're just not usually, I guess, used to the bait, you could say. But those are really the three, I don't know, the three main goals that, that really come with long lining. And that's what's kind of cool about it because you can apply it in all different situations. You know, maybe you're trying to get deep, maybe you're trying to cover an extended, you know, area of water, or maybe, you know, the water's super clear, you're on a super pressure fishery. These are all different reasons to, to implement this long lining technique. Now, one of the things that, that you really need to focus on when you're long lining is where you place the boat and how you move the boat around the area that you're trying to fish. And we kind of delved into it last night on, on the live stream, but I wanted to kind of reframe it to make sure it was clear because it is very nuanced because if you don't do this technique right, it doesn't work. That's been my experience. If you don't get your lines, and what I'm referring to as lines is how you sort of lay your line or lay that crankbait across the area that you're trying to cover. If you don't do it correctly, your bait's either not gonna run correctly or two, you're not gonna hit the area or the structure that you're trying to focus on. <laughs> you're welcome. So basically we made our line. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna troll to my points. You can see on my C-map we're on that little point, but I got my finger open on my spool and I'm just letting out line. It's gonna be a kind of a crappy explanation because I really gotta keep this line tight because it's all about how you drop that crankbait on their head. But I just got the trolling motor on almost high and I'm letting out line. And the whole trick is to run the boat over the fish, at least where you think they are. And I know exactly where they are. And here comes some of them. And you wanna make sure you troll past that point. You wanna be a good at least 30 or 40 yards past that point. That's why you need so much line on your, on your bait caster. I'm sorry, I'm falling all over the place. But you wanna be way past your point so that your crankbait's making the most bottom contact and it's traveling all the way through that pot of fish that you're seeing down there. You don't wanna short change them, otherwise you end up missing the big one because usually those big ones are on the edges. So the last thing that I wanted to hit on, and this is something, it's a question that comes up all the time. And it's this guy right here. You guys asked about it a bunch in the live stream as well as in the crankbait video. You guys can see that I have a clip on that crankbait right there. Now the first question that, that I get a lot of times is what clip is it? I do not recommend using any clip that you can find. Um, I'll put a link to this down in the description box of Tech Warehouse. These are owner hyper welded clips. It's an all welded clip. Let me see if I can get it off of here to show you a little bit closer. It's an all welded clip and I have had absolutely zero problems with this. I've never broke one off. Now, the irony being is if you go on to the, the reviews on it on Tackle Warehouse, the reviews are horrible. I don't know why. I don't know if people tried using it with braid or what. I literally have caught, I caught my 13, what is it, 13.7 or whatever with a bait on a clip. Um, I'd recommend the 60 pound. So we're dealing with, you know, pretty large crankbaits. I don't think the clip size is any kind of deterrent for bites or anything like that. I, when you're fishing a crankbait as fast as we do, especially with long lining, I don't think these fish are looking at the bait and going, oh, look at the little wire clip on there. I'm not gonna bite it. Now you might disagree with me. That's fine, drop it down in the comments box. I don't think they care. I think it's all about bait vibration, bait speed, and basically triggering that reaction. And it, it doesn't, like little dangly things like that don't matter. But what does it do? 
So I think the clip achieves a couple things. And one of them, I actually, I didn't even think about it. My buddy Ryan Salzman, who's a guide out on, um, on Gunnersville and the TVA Epic Stick, he's got some really cool YouTube videos. Go check him out. Um, but the first thing that it does for me is when you're long lining, and we talked about it in the live stream, I really think you get maybe like four or five passes on these fish. And when I say a pass, I mean basically dragging the bait one, and then you drop it and you troll back the other way, crank it down. You get four or five times going back and forth on these structures or pods of fish before these fish get smart to the game. So one thing that I do to sort of mix it up is in those, those first initial passes, I'll use one bait. So for instance, I got this crush, um, this is a C15. I'll use this one maybe a couple times. I'll switch to say a dredger. And then oftentimes I'll actually clean up with um, like a DT20 or something like that. But with any school of fish, when you get them triggered, time is of the essence. So I wanna be able to switch out baits very quickly. And this clip allows me to do that. It literally just snaps like that. You don't even need to use the pliers. I can pop one bait off and put on another. You'll also notice that I am not taking the rings off of these guys. I leave the ring on and we're gonna talk about that in just a second, but it's as, e it's as easy as that. It clips right on. It's super duper easy to do. So the other thing, and this is what Ryan kind of talked about, is Ryan mentioned that a lot of guys on Gunner's Build use these clips on top water, which I also do. I, I'll use them on 30 or 40 pound braid for a spook, for a whopper plopper, for anything along those lines. Once again, for the same reason, I think I'm getting a reaction bite with those top waters. I don't think it matters if it has this dangly clip. And it's just easy to change them out because top water is one of those it's just kind of like crankbaiting, but in a little different way. Sometimes they want blub, blub, blub. Sometimes they want blub, blub. Sometimes they want, you know, walking. That, that different bubble, that different sort of action, um, it can make or break a topwater bite. But this video is not about topwater. So back to crankbaits. But what Ryan talked about is if you guys look really closely, so you have the split ring and you have the clip, you have a lot of free range of motion right there. So what he thought, and it makes perfect sense to me now, kind of looking at it in retrospect, is that clip actually gives that bait extra range of motion, making it look a little different compared to other crankbaits that these bass feet, that these bass see when they're tied directly to the line. So I don't know if it works, but frankly, it gives me like more confidence in, in using the clips. And the clips are easy; they're super efficient, and they allow me to change those baits because really. Like I said, those initial first passes and being able to be malleable and change your bait very quickly and make another pass, especially if you got some wind or some weather, it's always hard to retie, you know, clip your bait off and retie. Just being more efficient and more effective in a quicker manner, that's what these clips do. Don't use them to throw frogs, though. That, that would be a mistake. But that's kind of a cap on, on long lining. You know, there's definitely some more nuances to it, but you guys asked a lot of questions and I think we hit on them. If you do have any other questions or any experiences with long lining, I know the pros can't use this in the top level tournaments. Part of that reason is because these fish are coming out of such deep water, oftentimes it is hard for them to survive because their air bladders will basically cause them to float up in the live well and they can't breathe. So a, a side recommendation, if you implement this technique, especially for catching fish over 25 feet of water, you know me, I'm always about, I wouldn't call it conservation, but I love to fish. I love catching fish and learning about them. But if the fish are dead and not there, you can't do that. So I'm always about making sure that bass goes back down or goes back to his home so we can catch it again. You know, we don't want to hurt the fish, we want to catch them, but we want to preserve that resource and, and being, smart when we're using certain techniques that maybe stress a fish out or catch fish in, in depths of water where they can't survive when they're up is, is really important. So especially if you're tournament fishing or something like that, I'd highly recommend staying away from this technique because even if you gas these fish, um, which basically you put like a little needle behind their dorsal fin to clear their air bladder, since the temperatures are hot, you know, during summer when you're cranking in that, a lot of times these fish won't survive. So it's best if you catch them, make sure to let them go in that first 30 to 60 seconds, maybe take a quick picture, but get them back down there because it, that's sort of their window to get back to that, that, especially if you're catching them super deep, to get back to that super depth that they were at. 
But like I said, the, that's kind of the basics of long lining as well as addressing some of those questions that you had about the cranking video. If you guys got any questions though, drop them down in the comments box. Anything to add, I'm always interested in your perspective. But make sure to go check out the other garage talk we did on various crankbaits. We went through some of the picks for summer cranking, which is hot and heavy right now, let me tell you. But I appreciate you guys supporting the channel and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because YouTube does not want to. We'll see you back in the garage or back out on the water. Tight line still then.